My name is Matt Moen. I help build Drupal 8. Yeah? yeah. Right? Yes. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. module for that? There, of course there is. I've got a you t-shirt on this. I mean the people. All of the people who were going to issue call <gasps> You're awesome. Do not Let me see it like this though for the video. And, risk yep. of and, death. and then say, get down off that podium. first patch ritual, <laughs> FTW. First patch ritual, if FDA. If you on <laughs> the issue at all, come up here. <laughs> Nobody's leaving the room. <laughs> Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> there are no excuses. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Cool. Yeah. So, and congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes? Oh, I'm saying we're in the way of Okay, and then you, right here. Be completely natural. Was <laughs> 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 that a selfie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, there's a camera there, there's a camera there. Hello. Hey, how's it going? All right, are we ready to go? Yeah. Mike's not on, though. All right. Mike. So, Mike. Hi. Mike is not on? I think it's on. I think I'm not just talking into it. Hello. Hey. Is that on? Yes. yes. We have to talk really loud. Yeah, you have to be really close to it. Hi! Hi! Not that close. My name's uh, Angie Byron, or I go by WebChick on the internet, and on Drupal.org and such. And uh, I'm a core committer for Drupal 8, and so I've been kind of running around between both sprints today, trying to uh, find cool new stuff to do, and, and what I've been told by Kathy Thays and, um, and uh, and Andrea's uh, Zen Doodles, I don't know your last name. So Perk. So Perk at Zen Doodles is that we have uh, a, uh, a new patch for Drupal Core that has been marked uh, reviewed and tested by the community, which means it goes to someone like myself to review and do a final check over. Um, that was written by Matt. Matt, whose Drupal Core username is? Feels Groove. Feels Groove. And then We'll, we'll see it in a second and I'll be able to, yeah. And then, uh, was reviewed by? Uh, well, both of them, I guess. Yeah, I guess both was, was reviewed yeah. by Catherine D, Catherine Druckmann, and then was, uh, like, just sort of, like, checked on, just to make sure everything was copacetic by? Marcus Manoff. Marcus Manoff. All right. So here is the issue. Um, the issue title is, inaccurate text, images must be smaller than max pixels. And this issue actually has a really great issue summary, which is even better than when I looked at it earlier in the day. So it says, before, an issue, or before a user uploads an image, if there's a maximum dimension set, the help text reads, images must be smaller than 100 by 100 pixels. But that's actually not true, because the image will automatically be resized to accommodate those limits, so we should replace it with something that actually is factual, right? This is always good, when you can replace false things with true things. <laughs> All right. And there's even an awesome before the patch and after the patch screenshots, which is so helpful on user interface issues because then it saves me tons of times when I have to install Drupal all over and apply the patch and check it myself and just look at the screenshots. So thank you. Who uploaded the screenshots? Yeah, that was, that was yeah. All right. Thank you, mysterious screenshot uploader person. That is all right. Putting them in summary that was great because I don't want to dig for them. The more that you can do to save reviewer and committer time, the more patches can be reviewed and committed by other people. So this is actually really great. Um, so it says before the patch, you can see we have this images must be smaller than 100 by 75 pixels. And then after the patch, um, it says images larger than that will be resized, which is a much more accurate error message. So that's awesome. So then what I'll do is I'll scroll down a bit uh, until I find like the list of patches. And I'm going to click on uh, this one, take me down to this. So fearless group. The fabulous fearless group has uploaded this patch. 
Uh, what I normally do is I look at something called Dreditor, D-R-E-D-I-T-O-R, which I think if you attended the uh, session this morning, you, you learned about. But it's cool because it lets me actually look in here and see what's going on. Um, so the, the text is pretty straightforward. It's replacing what it used to say here. Images must be between, or images smaller than this. Um, it's this bust, you know, kind of thing, and it's changing it. Now this is interesting. No, I'm just reading it. Okay. It's larger than So we've changed between yeah. so to they're... larger and larger. So I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to read the issue summary again. Because I'm trying to figure out. Because I thought this would be very simple. <laughs> There's three cases. Yeah. The case where it was both min and max. It was true that it had to be oh, okay. larger, but if it was even larger than that, it's going to be resized. So that was also false. So now okay, I'm so what, the, what he's done here is there's actually a number of different conditions. And if you try and upload a patch smaller than the minimum size, that actually is an error and it won't upscale the image for you. But if it's larger than what the uh, boundaries were, it will shrink it down. So what he's done is fixed it not only in the one place that's visible in the user interface in the screenshots, but also in two other places where the errors were inaccurate. Is that true? One other place and then the test that checks. Ah, one other place and then the test. We don't have failing tests. That's a, that's a good, good thing. All right. So knowing that extra bit of context is good. So that makes sense. So we're saying it must be larger than this, which is just testing that this string actually works. And then we actually spent a lot of time talking about whether or not we should add a test for the actual condition looked at in, the, uh, in, in this issue. We couldn't actually figure out a way to not have an image toolkit that could resize things. And then I think through a bunch of digging that you managed to do, we figured out that that's actually another bug. So it's cool because when you try and figure out how to test certain scenarios, you can actually uncover even more problems that we have to fix. But at the next DrupalCon, we'll, we'll let people fix those problems. So it'll be wonderful. So yeah, thanks for that. All right, so this, this actually looks good to me. So I'm going to do the next step, which is I'm going to copy this, uh, this thing. I'm going to go oops, get out of here. So this is my uh, checkout of 8.x. And uh, let me make the font more bigger. -er. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to first start with a git reset card because I don't know what I was doing, but it probably wasn't anything good. This is how you avoid committing things like bananas into core accidentally. <laughs> it never happens, no. And then I do a git pull rebase, and what this does is it sucks in all the new changes that have happened in Drupal 8. So you can see I'm like, I'm at least 10 minutes behind, so other things have been happening, so I always want to be really on the bleeding edge there. Then I'm going to grab the patch. Uh, yep, I'm going to make sure it still applies, which I'm going to get apply. Whoops. Spelling is, is useful. Uh, 107, da, da, da. If I don't get any errors, that means I did it right. So git is like very like mysterious in that way, where if it doesn't yell at you, you're fine. That's the kind of positive <laughs> git is. It's not a very healthy relationship. All right, so, so because that applied fine, um, if I want to double check, I can say git diff cache, and I can see what I should see in this is exactly what I saw in the patch earlier, and that's what I seem to see, so that's... that's Angie, awesome. show them the color words for this. Cool, the what? Show them the color words. I don't know what that means. Do git diff dash dash color dash words. Uh, uh, dash dash cache. Dash. That? Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, it's even better. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better when the um, your regular font isn't green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's holy man. I'm hardcore. It's like it reminds me of the nineties. So yeah. I like to use these. Maybe you need it slightly. So that that command again. You know, clear that that command. What? Oh, not that. Yeah. And this um, <laughs> get diff color words. And I put cached because of the way get words. It doesn't matter. But anyway, then what it does is it tells you it deleted the word between and put larger instead. So what, what Kathy was saying is if I did something fancy like, uh, I'm just going to make you guys think all day. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, you, can, you can make fun of how much I don't know Git. It's really funny. All right, so if I did something like, uh, say, I used pro, there. Now that's much better. Uh, you can see it crosses out between and then puts large in them. So I can actually view it. Uh, that's neat. I didn't actually know about that. So see, everyone can learn something new at GoogleCon, <laughs> even core committers that have been involved in me for years now. Yay! All right, so that all looks good. The next step is uh, giving everyone credit for this. What's happening? Uh, I was testing two factor authentication in the other room. Good times. There we go, that's what I was trying to find. Um, you know what? That's terrible though. This isn't back from TestBot yet. Wait, uh, wait, no, no, you just said it's an old, you, this is. Oh, from two hours ago. Okay, hold on. Woo! Okay, yes, yeah, so there was like 1500. Okay, good, good, good. All right, we're good. Um, great. So, just wait, check. you want to explain that? Yeah. Um, so every time we upload a patch, there's this mysterious, miraculous thing that happens in the cloud. I'm just kidding, I don't know where it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we call it TestBot, and what it does is it sucks in all the patches, it downloads a new copy of Drupal 8, it applies the patch, it installs Drupal, and it runs our entire suite of uh, 71,000 some odd automated tests against it. Um, and that way, we don't hopefully very often commit broken code to Drupal 8, which keeps Drupal 8 stable and something that developers can work against at all times. Um, and that's really, really awesome. Um, so when this is read, that means that TestBot failed it, and you can go and view why that happened. Um, I have a feeling why that might have happened is the strings didn't match uh, did exactly the same or something like that, where, or I don't actually know what this is about. But yeah, okay, so probably what happened was this was before that step third hunk got fixed that talked about the uh, thing. So it's like, oops, I need to update the test because the string the, the test is checking changed. So. Um, and if it's yellow, that means that it's currently in progress. And so what I look for is green here because that means it ran through all of the 71,000 tests from TestBot and it, it got a thumbs up. So I applied the patch. Now what I do, and this is again something Dreaditor lets me do, is, uh, oh no. On this terrible, this is why Drupal.org needs to be responsive. Because like I literally can't actually see this. Okay, there we go. All right, so what it has given me is uh, Fearless Groove, Joe Kim, and Ryan Isimason. Ryan is Samson, I guess, uh, and as well as the person who created the issue. And so what Dreaditor does is it automatically knows anyone who uploaded a patch to the issue automatically gets commit credit, which is fair enough. But what it doesn't, it's not smart enough to know is people who also contribute to the issue but who weren't people who contribute code. And it's really important to me to also credit those people, especially if they had a material impact in actually making sure that it got to, to completion. So what I generally do is I look back, oh, this is making me angry. All right, there we go. Uh, back on the first few things. So, you know, I think Manart did a good job. He, he reviewed the patch. He went into great detail as far as what he did. He looked into that extension stuff and made sure that it was legit not to write a test against the missing extension because basically that is something you can't do. So I'm going to manually put Manart's name in the list. I'm going to scroll up a bit more. Catherine Lee, she embedded the screenshots. Um, did this through Dropping Shucks. These are great names. I have these guys. Um, Great, he applied, he or she, hold on. Right here. Unspecified. Right here. You're, you're in the room? Yeah. Bro, yeah. get on stage. All right. Uh, also, that's all the Trump shots. That's it's just a Louis Armstrong song. All right. Yeah, Trump shots. Drop it, Chucks, come on down. <laughs> Brent's worked on a review, but it doesn't look like Brent's posted a review, so Brent, I'm sorry, but you're not going to get in the message. Wah, wah. Um, okay. uh, but we want Catherine. D, like that, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, and then, uh, let's see, Big Nick, marked it needs review. Oh, Big Nick. Um, he took the screenshots and he also marked it back to the interview so it was clear there was more work to do. So sure, throw you in here too. It's a big happy family of, uh, of commit credit here. Oops, we need to be in there. Yeah. All right. I was in there, but I don't need commit credit, that's fine. Um, 
All right. I think that's everybody who looks like they kind of gave a really, I don't want to just credit any old person because it's important to actually like contribute and I don't want to take things away. But I think this is a pretty good list. If anyone feels they should be in this list and is not here, speak now or forever hold your peace. All right, so I'm gonna have a, let's do this. Back at the top. I'm gonna commit this actually before someone yells at me. Get rid of the A. We'll get mad. All right. So this is how we do our commit credits thing, which is kind of sad because Git doesn't parse it natively. But the advantage is you can give credit to all of these people who worked on it equally. So we do it like this. And then finally, the big moment when I push, and then this should, unless I get a permission error like I sometimes do, uh, you Fail. failed. Because the remote contains work. See, I told you, it's DrupalCon. I gotta be Can you show us how you do that? How do you do the git push to release the CMS? Sure, I'll show you. It goes like this. Push. Git. Push. Do it harder. Do it harder, everybody. Git. Git. Push. push. Yeah. So, now, that's what we're here for today, right? Release the new CMS. So let's get this rolling. Let's release the new CMS. A round of applause for Dries' big new CMS git push. Git, are you ready? I'm ready. ready. Do ready. it. Ready. Woo! Git push. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Try again. Git push. Did somebody change the password on the repo? And then finally, the big moment when I push and then this should, unless I get a permission error like I sometimes do, uh, ye failed. failed. Because the remote contains work. See, I told you, it's DrupalCon. I gotta be on top of things. All right, so it's telling me I need to do this git pull thing again because Alex Potts in the other room just like fire opposing patches. All right, one more time, git push. Hooray! Woo! and just double check and make sure that happens. We go to the log. Uh, the latest one is yeah. the patch we just committed and we can see all the things that happened. So great job, everybody. That was awesome. super cool. Yes. Ta-da! <laughs> First patch! That it wasn't just a programmer seeing a problem and coding a solution, right? It was actually this thing was worked on by probably like at least 20 or so people. It was someone to find the bug originally, someone to do an initial patch, someone to test to see if that worked or not by uploading different image sizes and see what happens, someone to write the patch that accounted for all of those problems, someone to look into why test spot was failing, someone to just take screenshots of what was going on, someone else to embed those screenshots in the first post so that people coming through the issue could you know, learn about that immediately without having to read 400 comments. So it's, it takes a village to do each one of these issues. So I want to really thank everybody who's participating in anything within these core issues because you all make a big difference and we collectively you can change the awesome world. So thanks everybody. Yeah. The issue number? Yeah. Well, close the issue. Oh my god. Yeah, no, 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 it, it should be closed. It'll be closed. Really? Uh, no, it marks it fixed. It, it oh, no, it doesn't mark it fixed. It should mark closed. Yeah, you've got to mark it fixed. Okay, right. It doesn't yet do this, although we're hoping Drupal.org eventually does this. It doesn't automatically mark it fixed. So, where did it go? Read, read, the, read the next steps, though. Oh, yeah, it needs a backport. So, we don't even want to fix it. Okay, hold on. Oh, but well, then it's still <laughs> Ah! No. Yeah, it's still easy. Uh, no? Oh, well, hold on. Where was that? What? Ah! This is the problem with my. Uh, it's very sad. Alright, here we go. That was the issue again. So, I'm going to say uh, committed and push to 8x. Great. Work, everyone. Uh, and then because it says these backwards, it says, normally I would mark it fixed at this point, but instead I'm going to actually mark it um, patch to be ported and then move it down to 7.x. So if that was too much fun doing it on Drupal 8, you could do it all over again for Drupal 7. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Anyway.
And then that is the thing, it's probably going to conflict with documents and you get angry. And you get angry. Does anybody know any good Drupal jokes? <laughs> Uh, there we go. And so now it's out of the Drupal 8 queue because it's fixed in Drupal 8 and now it becomes David Rothstein's problem. And we can all <laughs> celebrate. Yay. Anyway, now we're actually really done. So, yes. Thanks, everybody. So, Matt. I got Moan, the you say Moan? Moan, yes. Moan, congratulations on your first patch in Drupal. Thank you. How are you feeling? Excited. It's it awesome, cool. right? Yeah. It was a great experience. Yeah, I love the energy in the, this is actually my favorite moment at yeah. DrupalCon. I love the energy in the room for this. So, so let's do the micro version of, of who you are and what you do. Okay. So, yeah, how long have you been doing Drupal? Um, probably about six years. Now. About six years. Yeah. Um, what was the first version of Drupal that you worked with? Six. I, well, technically five, but I never got anything live with five. Just okay. six. All so. right. So, what's your first Drupal memory? Um, uh, you know, it's it's uh, figuring out how much cooler and easier it was to build uh, sort of. Um, sites that work really well with lots of fields compared to Joomla that I was working with before. So, yeah, uh -huh. I, was a, I was a Joomla migrant briefly a long time ago. So First memory, Drupal much cooler than Joomla. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice. And what do you do now? Where do you work? Uh, I work at Kilpatrick Design. We're mm -hmm. a, a marketing company in uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Nice. So you've been doing Drupal for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, I have two questions about that. Sure. Um, what motivated you? What happened mm -hmm. so that you're a contributor now? Well, I've had some, you know, I've, I got a few contributed modules. I've helped with in the contrib space a bit. Um, and, you know, Drupal helps me make a living. Uh, so, you know, the, the only thing that was preventing me, I've wanted to be a core contributor, but the only thing that's been preventing me was uh, um, just sort of, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to know where to get started. So even right. if I've got the skills to sort of know where I'm most helpful and which issues are, are to be, uh, you know, I can make the most difference on and actually get something committed. And DrupalCon was an awesome place for that to sort of turn over. So, so, so you like you got involved in the mentoring and, and yeah, yeah. Somebody, um, uh, Manarth, uh, who was yep. the other guy who was Marcus up the stage. Yep. And um, uh, oh, I'm, I forget his name, but it was another guy, uh, another Aqua guy who was who was helping me. Thank you, um, other guy. Gets get a, uh, and I'm terribly sorry. For you. Uh, but yeah, they hooked me up and, and, and just helped me pick out some issues and, uh, um, you know, away we go. And they were helpful getting them reviewed and all that good all stuff. All right. So. so have you tasted blood now? Are you going to be back? Oh, yeah. I'd love to keep contributing. Sure. Awesome. Absolutely. So think back to when you were looking at Drupal 5, mm -hmm. doing stuff with Drupal 6. How has Drupal changed between then and now? Well, um, I mean, 7 was a huge shift in terms of how much we could do that didn't involve hacking. I mean, having things like fields and core um, and views has always been a great platform. Um, and features has made a big difference for us too in terms of being able to, which is, you know, it's contrib, but um, Drupal 8, I mean, I'm also doing some Symphony work too. So Drupal 8 is extremely exciting to me. The biggest pain point that we have with Drupal overall is that it's hard to test. It's hard to build well encapsulated code. And Drupal 8 just like solves all of that. For Blows us, it out so. of the water. All right. That's great. Yeah. So, so, What's the thing you're most excited about in Drupal 8? Um, it's, this is like super nerdy, but test coverage, believe it or not. Like being able to write good, solid, uh, encapsulated, uh, uh, tested code. All right. You know? Cool. I'm a, I'm a nerd, I guess. I don't know. What no. Say. Welcome to your <laughs> people. Kind of yeah, totally. <laughs> so, congratulations. That's Thank you. super awesome. Thank you for contributing. Hi, my name is Matt Moen. I help build Drupal 8. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, Go get my your pleasure. pad. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Everybody, it's time to learn the giddy pokey. Campbell, uh, co uh, coder, wonder twin. Ladies and gentlemen, all rise. We're going to need everybody standing up for this. We need the whole community to help so, with the git you. bush. <laughs> the patchy pokey, as I like to call it. <laughs> you can see the words, right?
So I'm going to show you all the actions, and I want everybody to catch the toilet paper and then follow along with me. You push your patches in. Make sure sticking out your tush is very important here. This is, this is coding standard. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not seeing very many people pushing here. Alex, everybody Paul, you together. know about pushing you push code. your Come patches on. in. You pull your patches out. You push your patches in. Then you fork them all about. Jazz hands. You fork them all about. Jazz hands are critical here. <laughs> critical. You diff your latest changes. And then you merge into a branch. You see this nice little tree we make here? All right, let's run that through another time. That's what gets all about. That's what gets all about. Okay, we're going to do that one more time. A little bit faster now. I like this song. I, you know, I, it's one of my favorites. It's a good song. It never fails to bring a tear to my eye. You push your patches in. You pull your patches out. You push your patches in. And you fork them all about. You dip your latest changes. And you merge into a branch. That's, That's what, what gets it's all about. I think we should keep the music. Maestro, Do cue the music. Questions? I think they've got it. <laughs> Everybody, patches, you patches in, in, you pull your patches out, you push your patches in, and you fork them all about. You dip your latest changes and you merge into a branch. That's what it's all about. Louder, everybody. You push, push your patches, patches in. in. You, pull you pull your patches out. You push, push your patches in. And you pour it all about. You dip your latest changes and you merge into a branch. That's what it's all about. Louder! In, you pull your there. patches out. out. I can't you hear you. You pull your patches in, and you pour the code, code about. about something. You dip your latest changes, and you merge into a branch. That's what it's all about.